to us, boys. <laughs> it was late of the room thing. Yes, 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 yes. Hello and welcome to the LEC post game. Uh, I'm Machine, joined by the amazing. I was about to say the amazing, the amazing That's Whippo, fine, but you're here as well. So <laughs> amazing Whippo and Young Buck joining me. And this is weird. I, last time I was actually watching League, Copenhagen Wolves with Young Buck and Amazing. He was running around on Lee Sin. You were just looking like a boss. And now <laughs> you're all here. Whippo, new blood, new chip off the old shoulder. Yeah. Good to have you guys here. So we're going to start from the very beginning, of course. We're just talking about the game that you just came out of. Obviously, very happy Broxa there. Bwipo, you just came alive. You just uh, was, there, was there something, a little bit of fire in your soul, a little bit of a rivalry perhaps going on there? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah? I mean, like there's, like, there's a certain point where you have to... Like, me, me as a player, I always forget when I lose, especially when I lose really badly. And I feel like my last performance like still sticks with me. Like, mm. to this day, like, I, after I lo losing that game on Talon, I realized that my Talon gameplay is really, like, it's way too bad sure um and and you know after a loss like that getting to prove that i can still play the game uh somewhat well <laughs> uh, feels pretty good young buck i mean he did play fantastically but was it was there a was there intent to to bully that top lane put so as under pressure not necessarily we actually did we did think they were, were going to pick renekton but that's why we didn't want to ban cannon because we actually probably wanted to pick it ourselves in that case yeah. then they picked it and we're like Okay, we're not very comfortable right now, but let's just pick the Aatrox like people said he would and then uh, play a very skill-based matchup. Right, just stick to the game plan. Yeah. yeah, and it certainly worked out. It looked fantastic. Um, so I've, I wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, the preparation coming into a, an opponent like Misfits. This was, you know, we say every game matters. This one really like could not yeah. have been more important. How, what was the preparation process for you, Young Buck, coming into a game like this? Something we've been doing the last few weeks, I would say, is that the, the first three games of scrims, we practice on blue and then three games on red, opposed to alternating side, which we used to do. And then what we do is we prepare three different drafts. We play them back to back. And if we really like a draft, we run it back with a small adaptation. Mm. So we're continuously playing stage drafts uh, specific to our opponent. And then we go on stage and we know what's going to happen. For example, yeah. this was, we knew we we're going to first pick Lucian, they're going to get Jarvan Galio, we're going to take Braum. Everything really fine. This was played like 10 times in this week. That must be such a nice feeling, Whipper, when just it's like the prophecy. You just see it happen like, ah, yes, well, actually, everything we expected. Going into this week, um, today, I even told Joy this morning, it's like, there's no way anyone is going to prioritize Renekton. Like, there's no way people know Renekton is OP. <laughs> and, then I, and then by the time we, we get to the studio and sit yeah. down, Joy looks at me and he tells me, Renekton's been picked three out of three games. <laughs> yeah, and Chachi's running and, around. And, and, and then the fourth games. game, yeah. he gets picked. Uh, we're oh, all yeah, watching. Yeah. And I'm like, please don't pick Renekton on four. And they just do. And I'm like, oh. You haven't been sleeping on Renekton? Um, may have. Oh, I'm thinking about it. Okay. I keep, my academy team has not picked up yet, but after today, I think uh, it is time. Okay, so time to see it in the we're top. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. That's what I like to see. Now, the next port of call is that race for playoffs. And I think we just have to talk about it just a little bit because it's so intense. It took me like two days to get my head around it, just how many fantastic league teams are in the running and how many teams every single game of League of Legends counts. So. Are you starting to feel that pressure, a bit of an unfamiliar amount of pressure now with these last couple of weeks coming in, Bwipo? Uh, honestly, I feel like I've had enough pressure uh, with the World Run. <laughs> like, the World Run gave me a good, a good idea of how much pressure there can be on someone, especially in group stage. It was the same idea, right? In group stage against IG, it was the same idea. Um, there's a lot of pressure. Every game counts. You really want to win those games to get on the good side of the bracket. And it's yeah. the same idea here, right? You really want to win those games so you get the selection, so you get to choose who you play. Uh, so in that sense, I feel like everyone in our team uh, has gotten uh, his fair share of pressure there. I believe it. Yeah, and now we actually saw tons of action tonight. Uh, some of the changes, <coughs> some also with huge changes in the standings. I want to bring them up and just hear what comes out of your mouth when we take a look at those standings, because take a look at this. Breathe this one in. Amazing. What's jumping off the page first? I mean, we've had our fair share of surprising victories today. Splice, I think, is jumping off the tip of my tongue. Yeah, for sure it's Splice. I did not expect them to be G2, and they actually honestly played their own side in the BG2, which has rarely happened before and only Origin has done it so far. Whereas like the SK loss I think uh, that Gita had was kind of random almost. Mm. Uh, so it was kind of interesting to see Spice actually get into the level of a top tier team where I didn't see them before. So G2 can bleed. Is this something you're you guys are going to be looking over checking out that Spice game? What do you reckon, Young Buck? I think we're looking at G2 for playoffs if we make it. I think after today's game, we have a really good chance of making playoffs. We knew this was a do or die moment. Mm. And seeing G2 bleed gives us a lot of hope going into the playoffs. So. We're looking at that. Yeah, and I was also just super hyped to see XL. Did you catch the game or were you guys all prepping and uh, traveling? Did you see we XL? Were we were watching. Some, yeah. some of us were playing solo queue, warming sure, up. Yeah. Some of us were watching, but... Uh, I mean, yeah. what, wow. Can we, can we get excited about XL now? Seeing UK League of Legends I climbing mean, a bit? What after tomorrow, maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Fnatic, you, you guys are playing them. You, surely there's a little bit more, a little bit more respect and fear now you've seen them take down a, a, a top dog. Uh, honestly, I feel like 
I mean, from a top lane's perspective, at least, I feel like I, I've somewhat shaped some of, a bit of the meta because I feel oh, like yeah. everyone's going conqueror now. Uh, I feel like I came in last week and I just I was like, just pick me a champion that goes conqueror, or even if they don't go conqueror, just I'll take conqueror on it and I'll fight this guy. And I feel like, uh, yeah, that's my comfort zone. I feel like expect kind of took it over as well. And honestly, uh, from for me at least. I'm not too scared because it's it's really my comfort zone. I that's, love this keystone. That's, that's fair enough. Uh, now I would I was going to talk talk about Origin, of course, and their performance today, but I'm I'm holding back on that one just a little bit because I want to take this in a different direction. But uh, uh, here's a fun question. Let's talk top six. So you guys, you just said you're taking a big leap. Mm. Now with them up on the board, who is that? Who who in your minds are the top contenders? Amazing. I mean, G2 clearly locked in. Yeah. Vitality very comfortable. But in that middle of the pack, in that brawl, who's who, who in your mind is clear? I think Origin is a clear contender yeah. because they have shown progress and they have been eight and two in the last ten games. I also think Fnatic obviously has to be scary. Like you have to be scared of them to a certain extent now. Um, Six and what yeah, is it now? I actually think Origin and Fnatic are probably the scary five. five. The scariest teams amongst the top six at least because I think Spice's um, game may have been a fluke. We still have to see more consistency from them. Yeah. Whereas Origin and Fnatic have been up and coming and they've been uh, rolling across the standings. So I think they are a safer bet. Okay, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Whenever I see Vitality, I don't know what it is in me, but something says I cannot trust them to do do well in playoffs. You know, yeah. so maybe I'm disrespecting them, but maybe you guys have different insight. What do you reckon? Sound about right? Ah, uh, sounds about right. I mean, that's what was experienced last year, right? Uh, in spring, you know, my, it was my first best of five. Uh, I feel Ooh. like, in general, even in 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 this, the last game we played, I think it was game two of the split. Uh, they're very linear in a sense that if they can't actually break through top lane, the yeah. game go slowly for them, and I feel like a slow game for Vitality is never a good game for them, at least from their perspective. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but from an outside view, that's, that's like. how I feel. And when they can't break open top lane, it does feel like they struggle to get advantages elsewhere. So a lot of love for Origin. I mean, is there anyone else you'd put in that category other than yourselves? I would say Splice is pretty Splice, safe yeah, now. Sure. I was going into the day, uh, I was thinking that we were going to uh, compete with Misfits and Splice because they were still our direct opponents, so we wanted to knock them down. Uh, Splice beating G2 is very uh, convincing as well, so I would say Splice is pretty much locked in. And then we're looking at Misfits against Schalke tomorrow. I think the loser is... Uh, can go home, basically. Yeah, yeah we've got some. Yeah. I mean, every game matters. That's right. I'm supposed <laughs> to keep saying that. Yeah. And it is my time also to tell you that the Kia player of the game has been locked in. Mr. Bwipo, 84% of the votes as well. A lot of, lot of love your way. Damn. Yeah. I mean, 84? What a game. I mean, you must have been having a lot of fun. Uh, honestly, I was like, I don't want to say I was shaking, but okay. I, was, I was really hyped. I was really fired up after the kill yeah. uh, on top lane. And then after, it was just... I felt so confident because I feel like most of the champions were not very good in Tatrox. Yeah. So I feel like in that sense it was a good pick. But the, like the big crutch about him right now is actually getting him through laning phase. Because I feel like you know you don't have the healing sustain in lane anymore, and you know you you still have the world under right. So if you just walk into a team fight, you, you can int once, and then you can still walk out after. <laughs> <Yeah. So laughs> even, even if you mess up, yeah. uh, you can just get a buttload of damage in and just be like, ah, you know what? Okay. We'll see what happens when I revive. So Aatrox is just int proof. Is that what you're saying? Ah, uh, not really, because okay. you can in so hard that you die twice in a row really fast, but... Uh, the double in. You get, well, you get one <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just double in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, a quick reminder as well, if you want to see teams like that are locking themselves in, the 13th and 14th of April, the top three teams in Europe will gather in Rotterdam to fight for the LEC title. Be sure to get your tickets at eu.lollysports.com slash Rotterdam. Is that, that's up your way, isn't it, your Netherlands? Yeah, it is. I, I know how to talk about my breakfast in Dutch. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> mein Ontbijt. Yeah, yeah. Ja, ik yeah. eet uh, brood. <laughs> and that's all I've got. Yeah, thank you, Val. Um, anyway, talking of language, actually, that is kind of where I want to take this next. Um, yeah. So, bear in mind, CS guy, I've spent a lot of my life following the Counter-Strike scene, and now as I dip my toe into, into League of Legends, I find there's, there's some clear differences that I would love to hear you guys' opinions on. I think the first thing I noticed is multinational rosters is is everywhere. I mean, I was looking for everyone speaking their native tongue, and I could find, here we go, Giants, Splice, Rocket. That, we're talking years ago. You were still in the server at that point. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. In Counter-Strike, to, to contrast that, FaZe is the only name I could find. Hellraiser's maybe Mouse Sports. So three teams of the entire Counter-Strike world that are doing what League of Legends players yeah. do. When I say that, Young Buck, do you, does, can you, can you, does anything jumping to your mind as to why that might be? Not necessarily, because yeah. I think everyone in Europe is fluent in English. Sure, that's true. And then you have a much bigger cha uh, champion pool, uh, player pool <laughs> to actually tap into if yeah. you want to build a very strong team. And if you limit yourself to only Swedish players or Danish players, I, I can imagine that sometimes you don't get the, the desired lineup. Sure, so, so for League, it's, it's 
it's mechanics over communication, would you say, Bwipo? No. no. I mean, I think everyone's comms is just so good. I, no, it's just more like everyone speaks a decent level of English, right? I feel yeah. like yeah. it's rare that you walk into a League of Legends team and you feel like, oh, this guy doesn't speak English very well or he can't communicate what he wants to do. But mm. the way you communicate is not that difficult either, you know? Someone that doesn't speak the language perfectly but has like a basic understanding can still communicate you what he wants to do in the game. League English, right? Basically, I mean, yeah. yeah. M maybe the... Maybe the difference is just the amount of communication you have to do in CSGO versus Leak, you know, like maybe there's a difference in that. I don't know if you can fit me on that. Well, I mean, there's def that people don't shut up in Counter-Strike comms, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I, mean, I think in League, and, and please give me some insight here, is it's a lot more non-verbal communication. Like you've just played so many times with mm. this comp or these players that you know, you always have expectations of what's mm. going to be happening without even asking or calling for it. It's, I think it's outside of the game. Uh, a lot of the talking is the coach, and at the end of the day, um, you know, if the coach gets his point across, the players just have to be able to execute what the coach wants, right? Sure. Uh, or at least have a general idea. So in that sense, I'm not sure if in CS, for example, I'm not sure how a coaching structure works there, where yeah. the players maybe have way more input and they're telling each other how to play more than more than anything. Yeah. Whereas in league, it's like, okay, we want to do this. How do we do that? And the coach knows. The coach, generally speaking, has the idea of this is how I want you to play around bot. This is how I want you to play around mid, and then you work with that. Not saying that's the best way, but in my experience, sure. this is how League of Legends okay. scene is rolling right now. So, so it coach, coach's word is gospel. I mean, because so, <laughs> in Counter Strike, no, but yeah. jokes aside, in Counter Strike, it's like if your coach doesn't, ha if the coach hasn't got garnered the respect of the players, then all hell breaks loose. So, is that something you found yourself when you were kind of moving into the coaching role? It was very important that these players were going to truly listen and follow what you were trying to take, take where you were trying to take them. Yeah, I've always said that you usually start out with a lot of respect from your players, but you have to keep earning it. And yeah, uh, yeah your players need to keep respecting you, and you need to be able to teach new things and tell them how you want to play the game, and they need to agree, or at least if they don't agree, see that there is benefit for the rest of the team to actually play that way. Do you find yourself defending your decisions often? Like I'm telling you, we're going to take. Aatrox on Buepo and it's going to be fire. Every now and then, yeah. yeah. Even in this draft, um, we had a really tough decision on the 4-5, the, the last rotation, and then I have to make the final call. And no. in the end, I was pretty happy with it. Yeah. And then you, too. Yeah, yeah, so you, you sit there smugly and the guys are like, OK, when that's the respect yeah. being earned you were just talking about. Yeah, someone yeah. has to take the responsibility. It's also usually if the player makes the choice and then the game is lost, there's a lot of uh, ice in the... In the <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Right? I'm sure. So the, the coach has to take that responsibility. And if it goes wrong, then everyone can flame the coach. But yeah. it's better than having everyone breathing down the neck of a player. OK, and then, then moving slightly on, but in a similar vein, We've noticed a lot. I think Origin are a, a good example in the league world. And uh, I mean, Astralis, of course, yeah. the best example, both kind of under that refresh umbrella, where teams are making huge changes into the way they approach competing. I mean, yeah. it, it wasn't that long ago, but back in the Copenhagen Wolves days, you guys were all locked up in a house somewhere in some suburb, and it's just suburb. five. <laughs> I'm guessing. <laughs> I this think is a guess. Where it was, you know? <laughs> but, but locked up in a house, just five gaming PCs and maybe three bedrooms. No, we, and we, just... we, we, we had with beds and that. That was, that, was, yeah. that, was, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was good. Because like, that was the dream. <laughs> that, that was it. the dream, right? Amazing. Yeah, like, was, back in the day. Oh, man. I, I, I remember I saw this. Like, one specific scene I always remember where the, where the boot camp in Copenhagen. Yeah. Uh, and we had like those folding beds, right? Like that. that. <laughs> so basically every night. <laughs> like, like camping beds. <laughs> yeah, basically camping beds. But every night, every night we basically slept on them. Like at some point, it's just, like you hear this like snap, right? Oh. And one of the players just has a leg up in the air. Wait, it's just like, folded? Yeah, it's yeah. folded. <laughs> so that happened like 15 times every night. Night, oh you know? god, I didn't realize it was that bad. <laughs> you got you had experiences with gaming houses. I mean, <laughs> we are seeing teams just a gaming house exodus. People have realized that this isn't the recipe for success. I mean, I was in the team when it happened. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> just waking up in the middle of the night, seeing someone's legs, legs in the air. <laughs> Uh, we had to shower in a swimming pool because the showers weren't working, so we had to walk like 500 meters to a swimming it. pool. That kind of stuff. Yeah, it we were uh, watching TV, sitting on a mattress. We didn't have a sofa or anything like that. Okay, but yeah, the good old times, right? <laughs> but even even more advanced gaming houses. I assume you guys are doing something similar. What's what's the Fnatic structure right now? Uh, it's it's player's choice basically. Player's like, choice. Uh, yeah. The organization will help you get your own apartment, your own place. But yes, you yes, have office, my, office space, basically. Yeah, we do uh, have an office space. Right, this, is what I'm this is the Australis oh, approach, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like so you like go you into your, the office, yeah, 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 you do yeah, yeah. work. Exactly. So you can either choose to stay at the house and then go to the office. But no matter what, we're practicing in the office. So yeah. everyone is expected to be at a certain time at the office. And outside of those hours, there's you know a few hours you have to be practicing. Yeah. But other than that, you're somewhat free. So with both perspectives now then, Young Buck, do you think there's like the work-life balance is much 
clearer? Do you think it, it's beneficial for players? Absolutely. I think uh, if you live and work in the same uh, environment, that's something that I've gone yeah. through uh, both in G2 and as a player as well. And the tough part is sleeping when players are like playing until late in the evening or early in the morning. Yeah. So it's very tough to actually have a private life, but also to get good quality sleep. So I think separating the office with uh, apartments is uh, very beneficial to us. I mean, I agree with that. It's also about like, honestly, having your private life, like having girlfriends. I having... didn't even think about that. When you said private life, I was yeah. like, Jesus, how do you even hang out with someone? <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> hey, you want to come to my place? I've got yeah, someone yeah, with no, his legs no, in the air and of course, some guy yeah. playing solo queue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, so I, I think it's so, much, so important to just like, honestly, to have some way to alleviate some of the pressure they have, right? Of it's about like just getting away from the people that you're usually working with. And if you have some dis like disagreements with them, there's no way to basically just like um, just just get them out there, right? If right. you're consistently on top of them too, you know. So that whole issue will grow and grow, and at some point you hate one another. So when it goes well, it goes well, and then you probably like one another and stuff. But if it goes badly, it goes really, really badly. If you're always in the same gaming house, yeah. practicing with one another. I mean, I love my friends, but I don't think I could, I could live with four of them playing video games until 3 a.m. every night. You know, like that's just not. We're not designed to enjoy that. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. And I kind of, I actually looked into what Origins resources are. And actually, I'm interested now to know what Fanatics are. But like they have, of course, Ex Peke. He's behind there. He's providing input. They've got Fabi. I'm going to butcher some pronunciation. Fa here. Fabian. Fabian. Fabian Bo Broich. Broich. Yeah. Ah. Sehr gut. Um, <laughs> he is a sports psychologist. Yep. You've got Andre and a, now my Portuguese, Guilherme. 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 Oh my God! Amazing is amazing. I mean, and I worked with him, you know. So yeah, I, I know. better learn the names, you know. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't remember your name, Maurice Schnucken. <laughs> and Deficio, of course, ex-pro and analyst. So, like, this is these aren't. This isn't the. This isn't the roster. This is the extra staff. Yeah. You guys think this is the way that League of Legends is going to go, young buck? I think it's getting better and better. We ourselves have two coaches, two managers. Uh, we have a content guy. We have a cleaner. We have a chef. We have a sports psychologist. Uh, all we're missing is. Uh, like a, a DJ. Physical, physical trainer and a DJ. Get salmon. <laughs> yeah. DJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so Bwipo, your your experience of the the kind of the pro player lifestyle is kind of different to what these yeah, these fellas have experienced. Young, yeah, young yes. kid. So actually, you've kind of come into it, and your experience has been relatively like it feels like it's a job as opposed to a. Oh, I mean, I mean, I okay, it's it's playing video yeah, games. Yeah, no, I mean, it's an opportunity to do what you love at the end of the day, and I get a, an easier time than these guys did, right? That these guys have to love the game a lot more than I did, <laughs> from what I hear. But uh, yeah. um, you know, I think at the end of the day, you're, you're all coming together because you love playing the game or yeah. studying or whatever, and I think uh, the opportunity to get that is is a beautiful thing, first of all, and the second of all, yeah, it, it was cool to just you know you go to the office and then. Mm -hmm. You just play like X amount of hours a day, but honestly, I've I've started a private life of myself this year because I feel like, uh, in terms of my ceiling at least, skill ceiling, I feel like it will help me in the long run. Yeah, and and physical health as well. Now, so it, it, we don't have to linger on this, but it's something I find interesting. Is I'm noticing a lot of esports pros in every game taking their physical health so much more seriously. Like, I mean, it used to just be like you'd go to a gaming house and it just like fast food hits you as a, like a truck and body odor. It's different now. I mean, like these guys have <laughs> got yeah. their gym bags on their shoulder. Not, you're not wrong, actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm not wrong, I'm telling you, man. No, but it's I, different. It's amazing. It's, it seems like everyone's looking after themselves in pursuit of, of greatness. Yeah, I think I think it established itself recently where a lot of players like looked at, honestly, uh, sports psychology and yeah. um, honestly, also health psychology, where they kind of like try to basically just talk about, hey, what is what is actually important for my body? What's important for me? And then they try to apply it to a certain extent. And I think this year, especially with a lot of sports psychologists now living in-house, it has become the next level where, um, especially last year, for example, on Schalke, right? We had, an, like, our sports psychologist was also a nutritionist to a certain extent. So that kind of helps you mm. to get your game to the next level and honestly prevent a lot of issues too, where, where it is late game, late game fatigue or late season fatigue, right? Because those are real issues that keep coming up uh, for a lot of players. Yeah, As, have you have you kind of felt the benefits of that in-house psychologist and nutritionist or like, the seven people that um, <laughs> Young Buck listed? Uh, I think honestly, I feel like a sports psychologist is really good at reminding you of things that you already know as well. It can sure. always teach you a lot of extra things, but I think fundamentally for me, for example, uh, our, our sports psychologist just brought up, you know, at the end of the day, you're your own coach. You're the best coach you can be for yourself. Like, there's nobody that can coach yourself better than you yourself. Because no one you knows know. you better, right? So wise. Yeah, hmm? yeah. yeah. that's smart. Well, <laughs> and then it just, it just hit me, and I'm like, okay, like, it, I already knew this, but 
just a reminder is sure. what sometimes really helps a player doing it because I feel like a lot of players are doing things that they're maybe not supposed to yeah. or are, but if you just remind them that this is how it should be done, it just it's a click. I was oh right, I can do this right. I don't have to always listen like. I don't have to always listen to everybody else's opinion. I should maybe consider mine first yeah. and then take everybody else's into consideration and I'll be able to form a better whole. Yeah, of course, your opinion is great, but Young Buck, of course, <laughs> is, your, is your daddy and uh, he'll, you'll be listening <laughs> to him for the draft, uh, <laughs> jokes aside. Um, so that's interesting, Young Buck. What, what is your take on that, on, on this, this kind of players truly, it's not just the scrims, it's not just the practice, it's also the, the psychologist, it's also the, the health. I think the truly competitive players always ask themselves, how can I get more out of myself? And yeah, you can play more League of Legends, you can study the game more, but something very simple is just working out, yeah. uh, drinking a lot of water, yeah. eating some fruits and vegetables. Sleeping? Sleeping. Power of sleep is insane. Exactly. <laughs> it's so simple, but a lot, yeah. of, a lot of players who don't have a lot of discipline to themselves, they fail in these categories and then they don't, they don't get the most out of themselves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just really interesting to see esports yeah. develop like this, right? Like it's, I don't know where we go next. What can we do next? I don't know. I don't know. In-house swimming pools? We've probably already oh, got we, that. We already had that. Damn it. I, I had really? that. Okay. In Origin, we had, we had it. Oh, I see. So he's gone from flippy up beds to swimming pools. This yeah, guy's I mean, living. That was a quick transition, actually. It was only a year between, you know? So. Damn. Okay, we're on the incline. And actually, <laughs> I think we're on the decline of this. Guys, thank you so much for spending so much time here. I, I probably have gone way over. I don't actually know. And this is just a glorified bracelet. It's not actually working. So. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the race of the playoffs does continue tomorrow as Misfits and Schalke kick off the day. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, I guess we wrap this one up. There's, there is more League of Legends coming up, though, uh, tonight with the LCS Academy starting at 1 a.m. Central European time. I'm over here. Whoops. Hi. Um, <laughs> if you missed anything from the LEC, we'll have a rebroadcast after the last game in Los Angeles. So thank you so much for hanging out with us. That's all from us here tonight. Thank you for watching. We will be back tomorrow for more more action at the LEC. See you then. There, Cavs has the flank position. He's gone back. Need to teleport in soon because Cavs is going to jump in. Surprise, says Cavs. That's two down. A third to follow. And it's all on Kobe. He takes that one charge. He's on the break. Can Kobe get the boomerangs in? Can he turn it around for his team? The only man who's been on this team the whole time. It's Kobe. And it's a party for Splash. The frozen two by one. He's underneath his towers. Cavs gets the to charge him, but it's just not enough. Kobe's still alive, and that's all you need in your splice. Going for those Nexus Towers is one who comes back out, but Kobe sends him right back to the fountain. And expect once again lands the book. So much damage coming out of so he owes the levels back once again. Abadaje still doing work. It was upset, just cleaning up the fight. Somehow got the triple, somehow got the penta. Just go there, gets the damage down, but it's enough to work his way through upset. Just needs one more twin bang. Upset jumped into his demise, and Exo will sweep away. Schalke in at the river. And Exo say, we may be out of playoffs, but you still got to beat us, Schalke. Selfman goes golden. It's up to Crown Shot. He's opening it up. Cole jumps onto the back line. He gets Crown Shot. Mithy's still alive. Patrick's still alive. OG somehow still alive as Nuketuck jumps forward once again. Oh, oh Bari and Nuketuck are in here. SK ran away from their own base and maybe sacrificed the game. Origin continue their climb at the NEC table with a dominant win over SK. Senka to the south coast and the ultimate death sentence will catch one. That's a kill for Atala. There's the uh, Portuguese fan base screaming in support. Rogue will pick up another kill to help on the fountain laser. The Nexus goes down and Vitality will retain control of second place. Now it's still a 4v4 and Misfits are running for their lives. Flash from Hillisang. Miasma from Hunt Summer will buy some time as Brox and Fnatic are looking to seal the deal and finish the game. There are a few chances left. Playoffs. A spot is on the horizon of Fnatic over the fight. Oh, Fnatic going for the dive! They've got Hunt Summer! They killed him under his tower! Yes. Fnatic truly are back in the fight for playoffs and the finals.